Hey everybody, Scott with another Tool Thought. This is the second video of the Velocity Rogue 6.0 tool bag. Uh, I titled the previous video Veto Killer Question uh, Mark. In my mind, yes, this is the Veto Killer, at least for me. Um, as I've said before, I'm still a big fan of the Veto bags. Their quality and durability and, you know, they're just... Uh, a really high quality tool bag. Uh, I just could never find one in the configuration I liked being a low volt AV technician. Um, so I moved out of my Veto and got into this and I'm very glad I did. I've only been working with it for about a week but uh, it's already proven itself to me. Um, it's a little heavier than I like but for some reason this bag carries well. Uh, it's a little easier to manage than the Vito. It must be because it's shorter. The, the Vito I had was the XXLF, and it was really long. Uh, so, you know, that might have had something to do with why I was always hurting my back lugging the thing around. But uh, let's get right into it. It's fully loaded with tools, and I've been loving the way it works, so uh, we'll get into that. So one of the first things I said in the previous video was that one of the things the Vito had over this bag was nowhere to put this strap. Well, that's not entirely true. As you can see, there's a pocket on the side for this strap. Uh, I guess their intent is when you carry it into a job site, you unhook this and, and take it off and stick it in there. But even just for throwing it in the truck, I leave it attached and just shove it in there and bam, it's out of your way. Uh, one of the most annoying things is when you stick the thing in your truck and somehow, I don't know, it always happens, that freaking strap gets stuck under the under the bag. Well, this way it doesn't do it. Uh, so now if you want to, you know, you carry it into the job, you set it down for the day or whatever, you just unhook this strap and now you've got full access to the top. It's a little busy up here, but you can still access the stuff that's in the center slot without unhooking this. But they've made arrangements for you to be able to move this out of the way. So all I do is with this loop here, I take this out, I feed it through there, and then I feed both of them back up through there, and that's how I leave it sit for the day. So now I have full access. To the top of the bag and uh, the slot in the middle. Uh, we'll get back to that but uh, I guess I'm going to show you what all is in this bag. Uh, outside I stuck on a cable cuff to hold my tape. I like that system. It works well for me. Um, this pouch here is mostly what I call fishing gear. Uh, hook wire, uh, ball chain, magnetic retriever, things like that. It's a good deep pocket, works well for it. Uh, the front flap is my non-critical stuff that I can afford to lose without freaking out right now. All that's in there is this magnetic uh, wristband that I like to use when I'm up on ladders and I need a bunch of hardware and whatnot. Uh, that's all that's in there. This side, these two outer pockets. All I've got in the one is the uh, folding Klein drywall saw. And I don't like to carry a full size hammer. So I just got this little cheapy stubby with me. Um, on pre-wires I use a full size hammer, but that's really all I need, you know, when I'm doing trims and finishes and things like that. Uh, all right, so let's start with the back panel. I call it the administrative area because it's perfect for stuff that used to take up space in my main tool area. Right now, it's got pens, pencils, uh, mark Sharpies, a phone charger. There's a power cube down there. This is hilarious. It's almost perfectly made for a bottle of whiteout, which I carry 
in the rare occasion that I dang a brand new ceiling tile or whatever, I like to touch it up. Uh, you know, I got, a, I got a microfiber in here. This is a neoprene pouch. Down in here, not much. Uh, much room for expansion. There's a lot of room in there I could throw in. I use this uh, eight tape to attach things to walls and panels and stuff that don't have mounting options. Uh, that's that. Back to the front. We have the main tool area. Now, I'm not going to go through every tool I've got, guys, but, uh, you know, you, you've seen my stuff before, but it's just, it's perfect. It, it's, it's a masterpiece. Uh, there's this long, deep pocket I use for drilling stuff, extensions, and things like that that fit perfectly in there. Uh, I've got a vintage ball screwdriver, a utility knife, a magnifying glass because I'm getting to be old as dirt and I can't see stuff anymore. This is a chamfer tool when you're cutting threaded rod. It, um, it makes a nice uh, edge on it, on the end of it. Instead of hitting it with a grinder, you just hit it with that. I got an F-wrench, a micro ratchet, and another different type of... Uh, F wrench. This is the the jo Jonard. Uh, this thing works really well. Uh, I got a beaten screwdriver, an impact Phillips, uh, a multi bit vintage uh, '70s era, '80s era screwdriver loaded up with a number three bit for some of the larger uh, TV like the Samsung hardware. Uh, this is a Ball Allen for the uh, post-install leveling on some of the Snap AV mounts and the other mounts are starting to come around to it. All my tools have a fine coating of uh, sweat on them from being out in the cold. Uh, all my little uh, tweaker type screwdrivers are down here. A vintage 70s era ratcheting uh, screwball driver. I love it because you get big power, turning power with that big ball on top. Uh, I got my scissors over here. Got my data shears and my Sunodas. Or uh, not my Sunodas, my engineer, sorry. Scissors. They're so sharp they cut light. <laughs> uh, I got a set of ball Allen's metric and standard in there. Uh, a set of vintage. Locking pliers, these are lever wrenches, circa 1970-something. If you haven't seen my channel by now, you know I like vintage tools, and I like using vintage tools to get stuff done. Uh, so I've got all my gripping stuff in this area here. You know, I got a small set of channel locks. I've got the Ohio, Dover, Ohio, 1925 plier wrench variant. Love these. I've got a vintage pair of uh, actual plier wrenches, seven inch size. And of course you gotta have the modern variant, the masterpiece of a Nipex. Yes, I said Nipex. Plier wrenches. Got a set of Hemos. Got a set of needle nose in there. Center pocket is always the dykes, the E338 channel locks. Got a set of mini bolt cutters for cutting hard screws and stuff so I don't ding the edge on my dykes. Another set of channel locks. A uh, set of needle nose, vintage uh, 1970s-ish lever wrench locking pliers. Got the uh, just Klein strippers. Uh, the Sonoda cable tie dykes. These things are great. Um, then over here we've got all my, my crimping stuff. we got the compression uh, tool type for uh, B and C and Fs and stuff. Actually, I put this away for a long time because I thought it was cheap and crappy, but 
I've come back to it because it works very well. I mean, it's quick adjust. You can fit anything in there. You don't have to mess with dies or things that you can lose. It works great, so it's back in the bag. Uh, ideal 45 crimper, RJ45 crimper. I like this a lot. It's compact, fits well in a tool belt, fits better than the Soul Star one or the Platinum Tools one that I used to have. Uh, the Platinum Tools Big Red Cable Stripper. I love this thing because uh, this little piece of Velcro on the end really makes life easier when you're trying to, you know, comb the braid out of the way. Because if you get astray, you know, you get a short, so. And this thing's going to bite me. Got my punch down tool, ICC. A couple of pucks. I got an ICC one. And this one, well, I don't know what, where I got this blue one. But uh, it works as well. It's got all different kind of configuration options. I don't know why I carry two. I just like having them. And then I got a inspection mirror in there, a lighted one for uh, looking behind TVs and whatnot. Comes in handy from time to time. And then in the pouch, you can see I've got uh, I've got my cable tie gun in there, some flashlight batteries. I've got some Apex bits, uh, a small flashlight for looking in holes in walls, and this magnetic uh, parts tray. Uh, works pretty good. I thought the stuff would be falling off all the time inside the bag, but it hasn't yet. So that's that's a winner there. I'm sure I could find a way to upgrade it to uh, some real powerful rare earth magnets if I was having problems with it. But so far, it's been great. Uh, I think that's it for the front. Um, it's just nice. I mean, everything, I don't know, It, it it's everything has a place in here, you know? It's not that far different from a, a Vito, but the extra pouches and things like that and, you know, the deep pockets instead of the narrow, you know, inch or inch and a half deep ones on some of the Vitos and, and the use of the neoprene is really nice. Uh, I like that a lot. And especially on the back, having a place to put pens and pencils and things like that, slots just for that is, is perfect. All right, so here's the back side. And this is the instrumentation side, I call it. Uh, there's a D-ring here. I just throw my little CW Hansen magnetic stud finder on there. My Fluke Intellitone, Promer, uh, Intellitone Probe toner goes in this main pocket here. You got the, you got the tape measure clip there. The Klein goes in there. Here's a neoprene pocket. It's got my network tester in it. Uh, it's a Platinum Tools, if anybody gives a crap. Um, I don't like having to move stuff to get the stuff, but eh, it's not that bad with this, you know, because you can't really get that out without taking the tape off, but it's, it's one thing. It's not like I have to move multiple things uh, to get stuff out of there, so... Uh, Volt Cricket, an outlet tester, uh, my, uh, Testum cable tester tests for open shorts. I don't think it tests for grounds, but it's, it's, it's worked great for years. I've had this thing for 11 years now, and I think I've changed the battery once. It also does tone as well. Um, the neoprene pockets are awesome, you know, for fitting in stuff like this little Stanley compact uh, socket set, which, you know, I'm not a big fan of Stanley stuff. I used to be when it was made in the USA, but, uh, but it was really the only socket set in that form factor that went up, I think it goes up to 9 sixteenths in quarter inch drive. Uh, so I have, you know, I have that in there. I've got my multimeter, which is a Milwaukee currently, but I'm gonna move back into Fluke. I mean, I, I like the Fluke better. 
I got a laser distance measurer in there. It's uh, only a 135 foot model. Uh, some bits for my ratcheting screwdriver. My ratcheting tweaker. Set of safety bits. Um, still intact amazingly. And I think that's it in the front. There's still room to put stuff down here. Uh, and then you got this huge pouch right here that um, is, you know, there's still room to put stuff in it. Right now it's got my, my tie wrap toad in it, uh, my level, and my template for uh, cut-ins. And that's it, guys. That is the Velocity Rogue 6.0 full of tools. Every tool that was in that Vito XXLF is in this bag now. And there's room for more stuff. And it doesn't feel like it's overstuffed. You you know, you start overstuffing it, you're going to blow out zippers and whatnot. These are nice heavy duty zippers, but you can't abuse them. It's the same thing on a Vito. Um, honestly, you know, on a personal note, I don't know why these, uh, premium bag manufacturers don't use steel zippers that would be my preference but you know we're technicians we're going to stuff everything we want we can in that bag just to cut down on trips to the truck so they are going to get put to the test and we'll see how she holds up in three to six months but i'm real happy with it right now um i can't state enough the value of this center slot to me um, you know, I keep my screw gun in there, all the small parts bins, which I've upsized, uh, like I said I was gonna. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. It's, it's perfect so far for me. I got no complaints. Um, I couldn't be more happy. Uh, if you've watched my videos before, you know Ferris Bueller's one of my favorite movies, and in his words, this thing is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend you pick one up. Uh, they're well worth the price. So far, I, I see nothing that's going to break down or I don't see anything, you know, anything wrong with this thing. I've got no complaints at all. So, uh, you got the means, pick one up. If you're looking for something with, uh, you know, with the options like this that gives you for tool storage. I thank you guys for watching. Uh, I appreciate it and have a good day.